again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. Today, we are going to be making a very quick and easy hat, the double V-stitch hat. Mm -hmm. Yep, perfect for this time of year. I think you guys are really going to like this. Now, I've done a couple of different hats similar to this one on this channel. The difference is, is that the laciness starts right from the get-go. And after the first, I believe, three rounds, it's a one round repeat. Very easy to make brim if you choose to do so. And yeah, it you can make one of these in an evening, no problem. All of your friends are going to be clamoring for one. All right. So for this particular piece, I used Red Heart Super Saver, uh, sort of a taupe colorway. Um, I think it's a uh, buff, if I'm not mistaken. It's a weight of four yarn. And for the bulk of the hat, I used a six millimeter crochet hook. It's a size J. And then for the brim, sort of to cinch up around the, the edge, I used a five millimeter crochet hook, a size H. So I went from a J to an H. And that sort of cinches in uh, the the brim just a little bit, not too much. And we're just doing a little bit of a, a one by one ribbing. Very, very, very easy. Now I made another one with this yarn, really quite nice, and came up with this. Ooh, it is lovely. Got so much tweed going on in it. Now this one, this was... Red Hearts Roll With It Melange. And this was in the colorway of theater. Really liked how this came out. It's it's fun, it's funky. And yeah, this came together in no time. So, you know what? Today, sort of mix things up. I'm going to be using Red Heart Super Saver Ombre in their uh, Anemone colorway. And again, yes, I'm going to be using a size J to begin with, and then swap over to a size H. Now, of course, based on your tension and your gauge, you may need to change the size, uh, you know, up or down as the case may be. Play around with it. All right. So at any rate, let's get started. Round one. Okay, so going to start with a slip knot and a chaining of four. One, two, three, and four. And then slip stitch to the first chain to create a ring. All right, and we're going to be working our stitches into this ring. Now, of course, yes, you can also use a, a magic ring method if you so choose. It's never been one of my favorites, so I use this method. So from here, going to chain up three, and that's going to count as our first double crochet. Pop in another double crochet for our first grouping of two doubles. And we're going to need a total of five. Now, if you want to make this hat bigger or smaller, now would be the time to do it. You can change the number of groupings of two, um, and that will considerably alter the finished size of your hat. Uh, so from now, I'm going to chain two and do two more doubles into that center ring. And I did quite a bit of playing around with the the number of pairs of doubles, you know, initially, and you know the the increasing and so forth. But this I hit upon, and it worked out rather well. So two doubles, chain two, two doubles, chain two, two more doubles, chain two. Two more doubles. Uh, 
Okay, so we have four groups. We need two more. So chain two, two doubles. Okay, so we have our five pairs. So from here, chain two and slip stitch into the top of the first double that we made. There we go. And you can also cinch the, the tail to close up that top and then sew in your tail later, no problem. All right, so that is round one. Round two. Okay, so at the end of round one, we did a slip stitch. Well, we need to get to this chain two space. So slip stitch into the next double, then slip stitch into the chain two space. And now we can really begin round two. So chain up three, double crochet into that same space, chain two, two more doubles into that same space, chain two, and two more doubles into the same space. So it's three pairs of doubles separated by chain two spaces. And we're gonna do that in each of the remaining chain two spaces all the way around. It's very simple. So without doing any chain two spaces, I'm gonna hop right in and go into the next chain two space with two doubles. Chain two, two more doubles. Chain two and two more doubles. Okay, next chain two space, two doubles. Chain two, two more doubles. Chain two and two more doubles. There we go, pull out a little bit more yarn. All right, so we've got our three pairs. Okay, next chain two space, two doubles, chain two, two more doubles, chain two, and two more doubles. There we go. And then the last chain two space, same thing. Two doubles. Chain two. Two doubles. Chain two and two more doubles. All right, so from here, go directly into that first double crochet that we made and slip stitch into the top of it. There, 
then to really finish up round two, slip stitch into the next double crochet and into the chain two space. There we are. So we did quite a bit of increasing. So each of those chain two spaces has two doubles, chain two, two doubles, chain two, two doubles. All right. Onwards to row. Well, I keep saying row. It's round three, excuse me. Round three, yeah. Okay, so round three is actually going to be the last round that we do any increasing, which is rather convenient. So I'm going to start off round three by chaining up three, double crochet into the same space, chain two, two more doubles in the same space, chain two, two more doubles in the same space, there we go. So in our first chain two space, we did an increase. Now the next chain two space, we're not going to do an increase. We're just going to do a double V stitch. So after doing our increase, next chain two space, go in with two doubles, chain two, two doubles. Just a regular double V stitch. So two doubles, chain two, and come in. Two doubles. So we're only increasing every other chain two space for this round. So in our next grouping, okay, in this chain two space here, we're going to increase. So that's two doubles, chain two, two doubles, chain two, and two more doubles. Okay, next chain two space, just a regular double V stitch. So two doubles, chain two, two doubles. Two doubles, chain two, and two doubles. Okay, we got our next grouping here. So in the first of the chain two spaces, increase. Two doubles, chain two, two doubles, chain two, and two more doubles. Yep. There we go. Okay, so we have our increase. Next, chain two space. Two doubles, chain two, two doubles. No increase. Just keeping things status quo. Got the two. Chain two. Two more doubles. There we go. And we're getting there. Okay, the next grouping, first chain two space. Two doubles, chain two. Two doubles, chain two, and two doubles. There we go. Bit more yarn. 
And the beauty of this pattern is that this is the last of the increase rounds. So yeah, <laughs> it's going to be easy street after this for the most part. So we did our increasing just now. So into this next chain two space, two doubles, chain two, two doubles. There we go. And then the last grouping. So first one, increase, second, status quo. So into that first one, two doubles, chain two, two doubles, chain two, and two doubles. There we go. Next chain two space, status quo. So it's two doubles, chain two, and two doubles. There we go. And then to finish up round three, slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet. Ta -da! There you go. Actually, you know what? Let's finish, let's finish, finish round three. Slip stitch into the next double crochet and then slip stitch into that chain two space. So that really finishes up round three. And there you are. Pretty as a picture. Hm. All right, it is official. You have arrived at Easy Street because for rounds four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, we're just gonna be doing the exact same thing for the rest of the hat. And then we will get to the brim, which it's, it's easy. So do not worry. All right, so for the beginning of round four, start by chaining up three, double crochet into the same space, chain two, two doubles into that same space, because right now we are going to maintain an equilibrium with the circumference of the hat. Now, it may not seem like this is going to be big enough, but because we did so many increases, it will grow out a little bit and then it will start to create the, you know, the, the typical cup or hat shape. It will start to do that. So we did our two doubles, chain two, two doubles into the chain two space. Next chain two space, same thing. So it's two doubles, chain two, and two doubles. And so we're going to be maintaining this sort of equilibrium throughout every time you hit a chain two space. Now, do not do your clusters in between. No, it's only in the, the chain two spaces. is where you do your two doubles, chain two, two doubles. Now I get a lot of questions regarding hats in particular, where um, the, the concern is that it's not cupping, um, you know, it, it's not, uh, you know, developing the, the typical hat shape and it looks sort of like a, a melted vinyl record and it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Well, my only guess, you know, an educated guess, is that what happened is that you increased accidentally too much maybe, or you need to change your hook size. I mean, there are a lot of potential fixes for such a problem, but if you're not 
continually increasing and you're maintaining, it will eventually start to cup. So it happens to the best of us. Trust me, I've been there. So as you can see right now, I'm just doing my double V clusters into each chain two space all the way around. And that's really all there is to it. Now, if you are a fan of how the edge looks without using a brim, hey, more power to you. You know, if you like this sort of uh, lacy, sort of deckled edge, cool. You know, if that's what you like, go with it. Me, personally, I'm always a fan of a little bit of a, a finished brim look. That's just my personal preference. Uh, another option is if you want this hat to be more of a slouchy as opposed to a skull cap or beanie, instead of uh, doing just nine rounds of the, the lacing, you could do more rounds. Totally up to you. This hat is customizable. Just as I was saying before, regarding the the number of initial pairs of double crochets that we did at the center. You know, you could go down to four or increase up to six. Totally doable. There are options, and the crochet police are not going to come after you, I promise. Play around, experiment, have fun with it. And because this pattern works up so fast, it is not a huge investment of time. So making adjustments and doing a little bit of trial and error, hey, that's okay. Experimenting is how we creatively grow as artists, and I totally encourage it and recommend it. And I believe that we are almost, yes, we are almost, no? Ah, it's over here. <laughs> I was going to say, we're almost done. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this to the end of the round is because I want to count the exact number of chain two spaces that you should have at this point. You know, if you followed my particular sizing with the, the five pairs at the beginning, um, because it's, you know, honestly, it is easy to accidentally add an additional chain to space. It happens. I've done that sort of thing myself. Um, So got that one, and this, yeah, this is the last one. There we go. Okay, so we've reached the end of round four. So after doing your final cluster, slip stitch, into that first double crochet and then to finish finish the round slip stitch into that next double crochet okay i snagged apply there there we go and then slip stitch into that chain two space Ta -da! Okay, so the official, official count is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so you should have 15 chain 2 spaces. And yes, it is looking a little bit wibbly-wobbly, but if you keep going without adding any increases, it will start to create 
the, the hat shape that we know and love. So what I'm gonna do is off camera, I'm going to continue doing as we had to, you know, just been doing uh, a, a cluster per chain two space with the two doubles, chain two, two doubles. And I'm gonna keep going until I finish round nine. And then I'm gonna show you how I did the brim for my hat. All right, so get to it and I'll see you in a bit. Alrighty, so I've been stitching right along and we are now up to round 10. And as you can see, yeah, it has that very distinctive hat shape going on, exactly what we want. And at this point, I am going to swap over to my five millimeter size H crochet hook. Now, I only did the initial slip stitch to that first double crochet there, because right now we are going to start in on the, the brim. Now, my personal method, by the way, again, if you like this edge, leave it, that's fine. Me, I like the idea of having the brim. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do a solid round of double crochets, but we're also going to be decreasing just a little bit, and that's gonna help with the, the stitch count for the circumference of the brim. So start off by chaining up two, now that's gonna give us the height that we need, but it's not gonna count as an actual stitch, okay? And into this same stitch right here, do a double crochet. There we go. So we now have one double crochet. This chaining of two, it just sort of fills in the gap. All right, now, to proceed for the rest of this round, in every double crochet, make a double crochet stitch, easy enough. And then when you reach a chain two space, just one double crochet stitch, not two, to compensate for the, the two chains. No, just one double crochet stitch per chain two space, <clears throat> excuse me, and then in each double crochet, do a double crochet stitch, and then, you know, not doing anything differently, just keep doing double crochet stitches per double crochet stitch, like so. And then when you reach the chain two, just one double crochet. And if my memory serves me correctly, this will end up with a total of 72 stitches for the circumference of the brim, if I'm not mistaken. I could be, but I don't think that I am. And that is why I do the, the decrease at the chain two space where you just use one double crochet in that chain two space. Between that and using the smaller sized crochet hook, it sort of brings in the brim just a little bit and gives it a better shape, I think. And so that's really all that you need to do for the rest of this round. And so I'm going to crochet my way all the way around. And when I reach this point, it's gonna be a double, a double, one double in the chain two space, double, double, and then slip stitch. Ignore this chain two, but slip stitch into the top of this first double crochet right there, all right? So I'm gonna go all the way around and I'll meet back up with you when I'm done with round 10. See you in a bit. Round 11. Okay, actually I did just count all of my stitches and it came out to 74. That still works. All right, so for 
round 11, we're going to start in on the ribbing. And this is very simple. So I'm going to start off again by chaining up two. And we're going to do a one by one ribbing using front and back post double crochet stitches. And that's going to give it a little bit of a sort of an elastic ribbing. So ignoring this chaining of two around this post, we're going to start with a front post. So after yarning over, going around the post, pull up a loop, pull through two, and pull through two. So that's a front post. Sticks out in front. Then the back post. Yarn over, and then instead of going through the front, we're going around the back. around that post and grabbing the yarn, pulling up that loop, pull through two, pull through two. So it creates a bar in the front. Okay, next front post. So yarn over and through, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. Then the back, yarn over, around the back, around that post, Oop. around the back, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. Then the front. And then the back, and the front. Just back front, back front, back front for the rest of the entire round. Now, me personally, I found that doing just this one round of front and back post double crochets was sufficient for a brim. For me, you might want to do two or more rounds. That's totally acceptable. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way around doing the front and back post ribbing. And then when I'm at about here, I will finish up with you. Okay, so I will see you in a moment. Just keep doing your front and back posts and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so I just have a few more stitches to go until we've reached the beginning of round 11. So I'm gonna do that, show you the join. And so I did a back, so I need to do a front. And then a back. And a front. There we go. And then this little doodad right down there, that is the chain two. So we're gonna ignore that, just like we're going to ignore this, which is our chain two. And we're gonna hop right in with a slip stitch to that first front post double crochet that we did. And there you go. And so you can see the reason why I did the chaining of two to give us the height uh, because that way it's pretty seamless, actually. It's quite nice. Now, if you are inclined to keep going, you know, say do round 12, 13, 14, what have you, you would proceed by chaining up two and you would simply do a front post around the front posts and back post around the back post. So I'm going I'm just going to do a couple to show you how you would proceed. I'm not going to, you know, continue for my own hat here, but just do a front post around the front post. And then back post around that back post. It's a little bit fiddly to do the back posts. I am more than willing to agree but it does work and it creates a beautiful texture. And with a little bit of practice, 
back post double crochets are not that bad, but practice, it's a good thing. Yeah, so you just keep going on in this fashion if you want a wider brim to each their own as far as their aesthetic preferences more power to you. So yeah, you would just keep on going in the same fashion to create a, a wider brim. Me, personally, I'm going to take these out. There, and then pull up my loop a little bit and cut my yarn, pull out the loop, sew in the end, and you are done. Yes. And in no time, you have a lovely completely finished hat. And I did this in, I want to say about, you know, less than two hours total. Um, I, I like it. <laughs> you know, it, it's a quick project. It's fun. It's easy. And because for the most part, you're working into stitch spaces, it's even easier. So if you want to use a yarn that is perhaps a bit foofy, like a, a boucle or a, a homespun, yeah, that could totally work. All right. All righty, my dear. So that concludes today's tutorial on the double V stitch hat. I really hope that you liked today's video. And if you did, please give a little thumbs up button down below because you know that I appreciate your appreciation. And I love doing these videos and experimenting with new stitches and project ideas and designs and sharing them with all of you. Because I love you guys. You guys are awesome sauce. So you know what to do until next time, right? I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other and make them a hat. <laughs> and until next time, you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great day.